Welcome to the podcast for the sisters and bros. It will make you laugh from your head to your toes. Talking about their lives, from the highs to the lows. And the name of the title goes... The Sloppy Joes. Welcome everyone to hey! the Sloppy Joes. Yes, my name is Joe. <laughs> my name is Joe as well. You partying? Welcome back to the 1990s rave scene. The rave on. Uh, how have you been? Really well, thank you. Really nice. I'm the only person pretty much in my life who hasn't got ill in the last two weeks. Yeah. Everyone's going on Something's about going it. Something's going around though, isn't it? Something Something's is going, going around. around. Something 24 hour bug. You got around. it, 24 hour bug. I had it for 24 hours, it's a shame. You got but it. Look at me, I'm fighting fit, although I sound a bit more sexy, don't I? You definitely sound sexier yeah. and you look the same. I look exactly the same. Which is already 10 out of 10 sexiness, so what could you have improved? We haven't had a podcast since the live show went on sale for yeah. about two hours oh, bragging um, aren't we yeah. us. humble brags uh, and it sold out pretty quick but to be fair it was the patrons doing a lot of the heavy lifting there yeah. and if you want to be uh, in with a better chance of getting uh, tickets to the next live show yeah. extra podcasts extra live shows Sloppy Joe's feature all of that good stuff make sure you check out the Patreon Sloppy Joe's uh, on Patreon patreon.com forward slash Sloppy Joe's podcast oh, thank you to everyone who's bought tickets Sorry to people who've missed out. We will be doing more live shows in the future. Yep. But Sloppy Joe's Live is coming on the 3rd of December in 53-2 Theatre in Manchester. Yeah, we will film it as well, Unreal. but you can only watch it if you're a patron. Yes. So if you missed out on tickets, and you're like, oh, I couldn't get there. Or you're a patron from who lives far and wide. You've got patrons all over the place. Of course. Cornwall. Yeah. Ethan, oh, Ethan James, everybody. Ethan's here. Oh, hello, everyone. Give How us a random city. Oh, sorry. I'm too good. Oh, what was the question? Well, do both at the same time. Give us a random city, then ask, uh, tell us how you are. A random city? Yeah. Venice. Nice. And, uh, yes, I'm very well. Yeah, thank you for everyone to uh, come to our show. I didn't expect that it would sell out. I'd never mind so quickly. You did well. say if it sell, sold out in 24 hours, you would consider doing a sort of strip montage uh, magic mic style dance at the end of the show for us all um i don't i don't recall that was a bladder at the that, time i remember him saying something like that yeah i thought he said i'll take off an item of clothing for every ticket that sold <laughs> didn't he and he said if i've got nothing on each ticket sold is just one thrust Oh, I thought you were going to say one tug. No, 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 oh, no, 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 no. What have you been up to this week? <laughs> you pushed the ball um, out too far. <laughs> no, no, uh, I've been, I've been well. I've been, um, I've been doing a lot of work. A bit all over the place. I can tell that. Yeah. I feel that energy from you today. But everything's going okay. The quiz is. Go- I do my quiz in Wivington. This pub quiz you do on a Wednesday night is like nothing I've ever seen. It's. He's, right, this I've is never, <laughs> sorry, no offence to you, and I don't mean this in an offensive way. You're not a celebrity, are you? No. You're someone that does bits and bobs on radio on this, that, yeah, yeah, but yeah. you're not someone that's like of notoriety. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No offence. No, I agree, I agree. And yet, this pub quiz, it says on the sign, like printed outside yeah. the pub, Joe McGraw's famous pub quiz. <laughs> Mate, like, it's why the, I've never known the quiz master get his name on the bill before. It's be, yeah, and look how well it's turned out. There was 255 people in the pub the other day. Yeah. I made a bold claim. And then when claim. you got in, it was almost half of that, which is still great. No, no, no. Oh. I made a bold claim that that probably may have been one of the busiest pubs of Great Manchester that night. <laughs> Who else has got 255 people? you are so bold. In. You're like Aristotle or fucking Archimedes, aren't you? Yeah, I am bold. And, and I doth proclaim bold boldly, if I may say so myself, well, that boldly. that in Withington doth one of the busiest pubs in Manchester <laughs> on that night. It's a shame because so our work clashes, doesn't it? Because you do late stuff on Wednesday. Yeah. So you've never had the opportunity to, to witness one of the wild pub I, quits. There's nothing I would love more than to come to that pub quiz. We do a teabagging competition. Is this at the pub? This is at the pub. Right. Uh, uh, just a little game to break things up. Um, get a tea bag and a pint glass. Two extra points for your team, ladies and gentlemen. We're not there now. You don't say. How many tea bags? How many tea baggers have we got in? Could you be a tea bagger, Ethan? Could I be a tea bagger? Um, yeah. You were once on stage, if I remember. You said on an yeah, earlier podcast. Tea bag that guy in the face. Um, what do you make of Joe McGrath bringing features from his other work into uh, Sloppy Joe's? The well, teabag game. I oh, guess. Really? Yeah, I was telling you. Bit but, rude, isn't it? I guess we do that for Stratford Paddock, Joe. So. Yeah. Ethan, let's remain on teabagging, not the Bit throwing nice time. Idea. Yeah. Have you ever teabagged someone? Uh, no, I've never done that, Joe, no. Not even in Call of Duty online? 
Oh, um, <laughs> I guess I that's have a, then. Yeah, yeah. That's a pro, Mac. That is a pro. Mac. How much to let me or Joe teabag you? First of all, who are you picking? Oh. Um, I think Drew McGraw would be sweatier, so I'd want to stay away from him. So probably you, Drew. Oh, that's isn't nice, it so isn't nice it? when someone tells you that they'd rather you teabag them than are someone you, else? Do you think you're more le- you're less hairy down there? Do you trim a lot? I I do tend to trim a lot. I trim that thing to within an inch of its life. Really? Yeah, a mixture of manscaped and just outright blade anymore. work. Oh no, you can't see because I, you... <laughs> I actually use them and just just general blade work. Really? Yeah. Do you know like um like a you know a Gillette? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mac. But you you double up on the different blades because some well so for different areas. What you? T- Matt, nah, looks, Matt, you spent you, too you, long. You, you spent too long on your balls. If you were to delve into my nether regions, it looks like a patchwork quilt or the Netherlands from above. Do you know all the tulip fields of different yeah. colours? Yeah, wow. So we've got it's like, like Leicester City's uh, ground manager has been over your balls. Exactly. So o- on the upper thigh, we've got maybe a grade seven or eight. What? Yeah. This is weird. A this. steady taper from knee to nut. Yeah. Yeah. So longer at the knee, you wouldn't know anything was going on. Hang on a second. What's going up under the short line? Oh yeah, he's tidied it up. Sure. Nice. Then where leg meets under under gusset, you know that little gusset. It's a weird word. Under gusset between nut sack and butt sack. Or we are smooth as a bone. Love it. Yeah? Like an ice luge at a sort of 90s <laughs> kind of Wall so Street party. Odd. Yeah? You could pour vodka down that thing. Could you? Ball bag. Very much the same. <laughs> <laughs> then as we go to sort of the north side, sort of the moustache area, above the nose, if you will. Yeah. Or below the nose. Oh. Now we're talking about maybe a two grade. Below the nose, but not... A two grade. Yeah. 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 The overall sort of the forehead, maybe, ah, as you so could call it. it. Have we reached the bell end yet? The bell end is, I mean, predictably hairless. Yeah. Yeah, I've gone classic <laughs> on that. And then basically from that up to the belly button, we take a scissor. You do not scissor your belly button. We do. You scissor your belly button? Yeah. That's so mad. It's a two to three hour process, four times a week. I'm like, sure. Yeah, it's like, it's like um, Eddie Murphy getting result. ready for Nutty Professor. <laughs> I'm basically in hair and makeup most of my day. Even but my God, does it look good. You don't do what Joe does. You just do like one size fits all kind of vibe. Well, uh, when we got that Manscaped, which was very useful, thank you very much. Well, I got one. I still use that, so I keep it in good shape with that. Hold on, Ethan got one. Yeah, I was meant to say about that. What's going on here? They sent a couple I in. I didn't get any one. They sent a couple in and Ethan wanted it. Did you have one as well? I got one. Hold they only sent two. Many, they only sent two. Yeah, but you did. Why was this not up for debate? We thought you looked like the sort of person that, you know, if anything, you could do with keeping the hair. I bought a ball <laughs> trimmer, mm. which was just a classic trimmer, oh, yeah. about two years ago. And this is a genuine story. It came fully charged. Oh, dear. And it's, you know, still got 60% battery. <laughs> Because it tells you on the side. You've never trimmed it. You've never I've charged always trimmed it. But you've never charged oh. it. Well, because you're not there, there for long. You've vum, 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 shaft. Vum, 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 Disgusting. Um, Excuse me, no, it's not. Can I just the change? The technique is all, all, actually over the toilet like that. Are you facing the the front? Are you facing outwards? Or are you facing toward the? Um, I've got TikTok on the, the toilet. S- the system. What are you timing oh, yourself? No, what on TikTok? I'm live. <laughs> <laughs> just fucking catching up on like mm. some mad videos. I have no idea why I'm watching. Over the toilet like, like that. Like that. I don't work for them anymore. And then as soon as it's done, you need to clean up a little bit around the rim. Of, of the of the toilet, yeah. and then make sure all the hairs there flush. It's in a bit. Really? Why do you do it? I just like to do it on waste ground. They're like an old quarry or something. Nothing. Then like where'd it. you put it? Well, I put I do it over a black bin liner, and then I roll that up, put a stamp on it, and you post it. <laughs> <laughs> I just do it in the shower. That's gonna be our first line of merch, isn't it? Um, what have I been up to this week? Great question. I've spoken to a friend of yours actually. You don't know about this. No. Nah. What friend is it? It's not Andy. It's not Andy, no. Thank fuck for that. <laughs> What's that. What would Andy have told oh, me? a lot. Really? Don't get involved with Andy. Now, I spoke to your friend Tom Cooney. Oh. Who said he had a gift for you. He said he's been <sighs> meaning to give you this for a long time. 
and he didn't. He keeps forgetting to give it to you all the time. So what he did is he gave it me. I know exactly what it is. What did there's is a reason why I keep ignoring him. And he, Although gave, it, he gave it to me, and I've brought it with me onto the show, and we're going to try it out today. Yeah, I, I'm fully up for it. Here it is. This is LMI Hair Building Fibers, okay? Full hair instantly for fuller, thicker, natural-looking hair. Now, he bought me this two years he ago. He bought me this a long time ago. So thank you very much, Tom, for bringing this in. I'm sorry that it had to go the way it did. Release. Oops, sorry, that worked better in the edit. I'll try that again through two. So for, for the audio listeners, it is a sort of rectangle box. Mm -hmm. There's pictures of what looks like sperm. It's not sperm, it's it. follicles, but it does look <coughs> like sperm. It, it looks look, like yeah. sperm. Yeah, so what this is is one of those fuller, thicker, natural-looking hair because you've spoken to me in the past about a, a potential want for a hair transplant. Can it's, I say coming, it's coming, it's coming. It's coming. Like it's coming, it's like winter, right? What I think this would do is give the audience and yourself a look at what a potential hair transplant could do for you on a permanent basis. Not, this is Three, get two, one, mess. release. There we go. It's dropped. So basically, I've got a little tub here, and inside of it is an all-natural, non-toxic, textured solution for thinning and balding hair. I'm going to come around to you now. Thank you very much to Tom Cooney for this. You know I'm going to apply some of this to yeah, your I'm ready, I'm ready hair, to and this is what you will look like if you do decide to go to Istanbul. To Istanbul. So let me. Or one of the up. weirder regions of Turkey that do offer slight cheaper alternatives. Ankara. Yes, Belek. So I'm just going to apply. So you told the listeners. To oh, be careful up there, please. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not much fucking going on. Okay, so I'm just going to apply some of the. Uh, what is it? Like, whoa, man, what's going on here? Black dust. It's not black dust. It's <laughs> is this someone's ashes? No, 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 stay still. Gotta get it in the front because that's where we're really losing. Yeah, no. Oh my god, right. So for the audio listeners, Joe's currently stood above me, shaking far too much on. No, no, this no. is like how I salt my tea. It's not coming out. Assault your tea. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder you got high cholesterol. Fucking hell. That was a joke. I think it's this front bit here that we need to. Oh we'll fuck back off by this front bit. That's an online back. That's the problem area. This could just be a fucking scam. I think the stuff like this is doing is doing fuck all. Also, does this does this not have a... Oh, my God. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what the... <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Everyone's going to... Joe! What the fuck? Give us a 360, then. That's Joe. fucking decent, oh, isn't it? Get some of the back here. So what do you do? How much is this stuff? This is this is cheap. Maybe we don't need to go to Turkey. Turkey. That's incredible. Turkey in a tin, my man. Is it? I've had chicken in a tin. That was a bad day. Everyone on the side of the thing, yeah, this Stop. Oh! Just me in the corner. face. Back and right. Back and right. Back and left. Back and left. Back and left. Back and left. Does look good, doesn't it, Ethan? It looks great. Oh, look oh my God. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> you look so good. <laughs> you look so good. I can't believe it. <laughs> Just what like, is going yeah, on? Wipe your head a little bit. Just the forehead. Gets it, there's a bit of dusty stuff. Don't push it down. Don't move it around. Oh, God. It's incredible. Joe, you look amazing. It's just like someone's coloured my head in. I know. <laughs> just wipe your, wipe your head. Not, Why? What's going on? Because there's just dust on it. But what happens now? What happens now is you've got a full head of hair, mate. A ladies. Can you believe it? Does this, wow. Has this made you more or less likely to, to go to tea? You could get this done full time. Imagine how good you'd look. It's not bad, is it? You, you, look, you look five years younger. I do look good, though. You look about I? 23. Well, I'm fucking sold. All that stuff's good as well, man. Yeah. Keep that going till Christmas. I'll give you this. Thinking this is, away day. This is LMA coming. hair building fibres. Full hair instantly. Thank you It wasn't much. quite instant, but it was quick. Jesus. Look at you. Will it damage my hair in any way? I mean, come on. That's the last two words at this point. Right, thank you very much. We're going to keep this. Unbelievable. Tom, thank you, Tom Cooney. You, it looks a bit mad, Chris, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm not going to mention anything to Becky, my partner, when we get home. See if she says. just see if she says anything. And then we wait. Thank you very much for that. Oh, my. Uh, have you done for anything else? How's life? Well, you can't take me seriously. I'll tell you what it is. We've got a bigger TV screen behind the cameras. Yeah. That makes it look mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In real life, you look phenomenal. You look so good. Ethan, how's oh. your week been, mate? Wow. Well, I don't think I can top that. Um, I had a bit of a scrap with the bouncer Saturday the other day. You're always getting kicked out, aren't you? Yeah. You're, are you a bit of a weapon when you're drunk? Are you a bit of a liability? Because well, a lot of your stories start with you drinking and end with you being a twat. <laughs> As the old man at the gig can attest. Yeah, oh, yeah that's true. What would you, yeah, you that's how you made up your friend of leukaemia. 
Oh shit, yeah, I did, I did say that. And he just stood outside a, a toilet laughing at an old man, or clapping in his oh, face. Oh yes, that was at the Travis concert show, yeah. Such a weird so this, So repeat this story then, what happened? Um, so, I got picked on, basically, Drew, by a big fat bouncer, a very massive bouncer. And uh, I went to Oktoberfest in Fallowfield. Weird place to have it, isn't it? Nice. What, uh, 265 or something? Uh, 256, but it was oh, around the corner from there, Platfield Parks had a big tent in there, and it was a big beer festival. They tried to make it look all German. People dressed up as, like, those classic German beer ladies and men, you know? Yeah, the yeah are you in the later housing? housing? Yeah. Uh, yes, exactly. So, um, anyway, had a couple of steins, oh, right? Yeah. Jesus, they're big as well. Yeah. Yeah, and I only had one meal all day, right? Which so, was? Which was a KFC um, mega bucket thing for one. Mighty bucket for one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Not you know that. the one. Uh, yeah, so, scram that. Did you look at me and go, yeah, you know the one? That's fucking tight. To be fair, you have brought in two things from KFC as your 9 out of 10. You scrammed the KFC just there. Very nice. Carry anything? Um, so, had a few beers, had a good time with everyone, bit of a dance and all that. And, and then I got a bit drunk, a bit quicker than I thought I was going to because of the lack of food in my body, you yeah. see. Ah! Um, so I then, I then wander um, outside with my stein. Um, and I don't think you're supposed to do that. Well, in fact, you're not supposed to do that. But anyway, people were. So I went around and socialised with my friendship group, all in a circle, right, with our steins, yeah, having a little chat. And then a big fat bouncer comes over, grabs me, me drink, <coughs> and I just won't let go. Ah, uh, this is like a almost like a full stein. I'm not losing this. So he keeps pulling me Why around. Why don't you go back in with it? Well, uh, this is like outside in the front, and I'm with everyone else who have all got their drinks. Remember, but he's picked on me because I'm the five foot six man, and I, all my mates are six foot. So not, he's not going to go there and attack the girls, is he? So he's he's like swinging me round, and I'm just <laughs> holding on to this. <laughs> Honestly, we're just, we're just spinning around in circles. And I'm just... You're spin, are your feet oh. off the floor just spinning around like a kid with his dad, like that. Spinning you around, oh, holding so on to the pile, like, whoa! <laughs> Do you know you see, like, someone doing a tug of war with a pit bull? And they're just spinning it around in the air. That's you, you have the stand, just swinging it around his head, like that. I'm so sports. Well, I wasn't going to be bullied, Joe. I wasn't going to be bullied. So um, I then get to the point and shout at him, Go on, then hit me. Hit me if you want. You're not getting this style until you hit me. And then, uh, and then he just looks at us and glares at us like he's about to hit me and take me up on the offer. But um, he didn't. He just shoulder barged me and threw my drink all over the floor. And then my mates got involved, held him back, pushed him back. And obviously, when you've got your six foot mates around here, you feel a little bit hard. And I don't usually give verbal abuse, you see. But since I was a little bit hammered, I was. Letting him know that he was a fat wanker and he needs to lose weight and um, to to be better at his job, which I felt uh, it's, it's horrible and and, and I oh, apologised. No, no, no. I apologised to the bouncer for that. True. You pull, what at the time? Oh, he was a dick to me, but I shouldn't have given it back. So in that what? Way. How did you get kicked out? I guess. Well, I was already outside. I guess so. Um, yeah, I just got told to fuck off. Um, but then I got the taxi. Didn't I? I got a taxi. And he drove past the bouncer. So I said, one second, mate, let me put the window down. Put the window down and I go, you, you're a fat wanker. <laughs> and go, uh, you, you're a fat wanker. That's so bad. And it, it's wrong. And I don't want anyone to like think that I'm the kind of I think they'll be person. copycats. Yeah, I think yeah, there'll be yeah, people yeah, who, the, who film okay, themselves wow. calling bouncers fat wankers and getting their head That's kicking. insane. So, so what time of the night are we talking? Like, we just go in early than everyone else. Um, no, uh, like everyone got kicked out. I think it was only on till like maybe half eleven or eleven or something. Ah, oh, that's all right then. Oh, but I was. Ethan, oh, you're an absolute he's a fucking animal, isn't he? Liability on the night out. I threw it up so much as well. It really got to us. Uh, apparently, head butted the cupboards. Adam said he's got a video of me lying on the floor holding my head because I just nutted it. Apparently, I don't recall. Put that in the podcast. Yeah, can we put that in? Get out. Jesus Christ, Ethan. It's there. Um, right, well, that's how our week's been. Well done. What's next, it's Joe? Used to my hair. I can't get over it. You look um, like you're doing a bad Phil Foden it impression. It does look bad. Oh, it does, it looks it? great, though. Look how full it is. Mad, that, it's just, just, just the back of my head. Just for me. You need to just see if I do it when I go out filming, can you actually see the dust? 
I think there's uh, there's a lot of people on TV who are wearing that. If anyone wants to watch the first series of The American Office, Steve Carell has got a visible dust lined on the right right. Does he? Yeah. A lot of TV actors are getting filled in regularly. <laughs> like that bouncing that they did. He's been yeah. fucking on his way. Will it make you... Sorry, does it make you, like, sneeze and that? Because I'm allergic to dust, so I don't think I could do that if I begin to lose hair. What do you mean? You're aller- allergic to dust? Yeah, it makes me asthmatic and sneeze. So, like, if I had that on my hair, would it make me sneeze? Probably, yeah. What kind of dust, like? <clears throat> Just, like, uh, house dust. Not like your typical dust. Uh, you run of the mill dust. I didn't know you were allergic to dust. Yeah. yeah. Are you going to use that against me? Like, no, 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 no. no, no. no we ain't got anything I'm planned. Yeah, yeah, dust. yeah. No, going to no. sabotage you with no, dust. Absolutely not. I love that if that bouncer just wanted to beat you up, he just lock you in a very dusty room. Uh, I'd yeah, well, I would have sorted him out. The knocked him, ah, knocked him, him, you. Knocked him, him in Newcastle's yeah. trophy cabinet if you're in a dusty hey, room. Hey, <laughs> hey, Unlucky pal. There's a uh, surprise guest in it for the live show. That bouncer. Yeah, that bouncer to just kick the shit out of Ethan. <laughs> oh, zap. Um, yeah, make sure you, uh, if you are coming along, we're going to be trying to get the audience involved, so keep your emails peeled. Yes. That's not um, a thing. Also, agony bounce on the email, please. Yeah. Sloppy Joe's podcast at gmail.com. Please get in any queries or any questions you've got for us and the team here. We'll try and yeah. figure it out. If you're out. in a pickle, in a muddle, you need our help, you need some advice, Sloppy Joe's podcast at gmail.com. Send it in and we'll read it out. Right, Joe, I'm very excited. It comes to you to bring forward the 9 out of 10 club. This is because, which is going to change, by the way, I now, uh, I used to review food and not be able to slag it off, but I can slag food off now. Can you? Yeah. Don't wow. do positive, right? Neutrality is gone. Could do a great review. The 9 out of 10 club is where we bring in a food or drink each week and declare it 9 out of 10. And we have to convince the other two to agree with us and allow it in the 9 out of 10 club. I don't know what's going to happen here. My food this week is sometimes on this show, we brought in foods that we have to sort of think, is that a 9 out of 10? What is a 9 out of 10 in my life? What do I like? Something you have to dig deep and really think about it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Kimchi was one where I thought, I do love kimchi. Actually, I might think it's not. This food is a certainty for me. I used to have a conversation with my flatmate. I don't know if this is even. I used to have a conversation with my flatmate where we would talk about things that were like perfect foods, we'd call them. Yeah. Which was maybe a precursor to the 9 out of 10 club. It was. It's perfect always, foods. It's always been there, hasn't it? It's always been there, bubbling under the surface. And one thing that was always on my list of perfect foods is a food that I probably had almost every Saturday morning before football for 10 years in a row. Jesus. It is a food that is... For me, a perfect food. Simple, quick, cheap, can be made on a budget, on any budget. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, I bring you the greatest breakfast of all time. Beans on toast. Now, what I've got here is beans separate because I didn't want to pre-bean and soak up the soggy bread. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to administer the beans live on the show. Beans on toast. Beans on toast. One of This is your favourite, isn't it? This is unreal. I've been wanting to do this since week Beans one. Beans and toast is, 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 is... It's fucking amazing. So here we have the Warburton's White. Toasty in the orange bag. You know the one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on top of that. Where's the cheese? Huh? Where's the cheese? What do you mean? Where's the cheese? What do you mean? Where's the cheese? Where's the cheese? Well, does that make it worse if there's no cheese? Beans and toast with cheese on is good, isn't it? Is it better than beans and toast without cheese? Even. It's better with the cheese, Drew. Is it? No! (laughs) 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 Yes! Let it rain, baby! Lucky it brought cheese in, hasn't it? (laughs) Now we're talking! Too right! Oh, get in! And that wasn't even planned. You didn't know why, did you? (laughs) Here we go with that, right? Oh, right, get it over here. There's no question about it now. Go on, let's slice this bad boy in half so you can... Come on, Ethan, leave it on the wise. You know the drill. Pick it up. Get off of that, Dan. You're Jesus, absolute shop watch all. out, though. So I'm going to tell bean. a bit about beans on toast now. I'm going to reveal a couple of home truths here. Sorry about this. I'm getting my hands involved. Right. <laughs> Doing a nine. Jesus Christ, there we go. So you got up. half each. The audio listeners, he's thinking a lot. It's Heinz beans, Drew. Now, nah, they don't in, care. on this instance, it is Heinz beans. What I will say, I think the best tinned beans are uh, Branston beans. I think they're the best beans you can get. However, I appreciate that that's not everyone's favourite, and the classic is the Heinz bean. Now, it is so simple. The ease of which it's created has to be taken into account. It's stunning. It's got 
everything you need. It has got protein, it's got carbohydrates, it's got vitamins, it's got minerals, it's got a bit of sweet, it's got the crunch, it's got the, the, the cream, the dairy, the cheese. It has got everything. I'm going to take a bite. Oh. Mm. You crack on. Beans on toast. Now, when Joe brought Blight out of the plate, it was looking good. The, the trouble for me was going to be, is it an eight... Point five is it? A, you know, is it creeping to the nine out of ten club by itself? The addition of the cheese makes my clarity of that dish completely different. And I'm not saying I don't like peas and toast just by itself, but what gives it the little va va voom is that little bit of cheese, oh. a little bit of saltiness that the cheese adds to it. Just a little bit extra, isn't it? It's. I don't think our minds are anywhere to be. Uh, you know, we don't need to be worried in any way. I don't know Ethan James's take though on, on beans and toast. Well, I think when we saw the cheese come out there, it really uh, won my heart over. It shows I'm an easy man to please, but that can be a good thing at times. <laughs> at times? What times? Just like, um, you know, when you just presented beans and toast and that. Yeah. I don't or in the bedroom? I guess, well. Well, you know me. Um, and it, <laughs> Wait, I, mean, well, that's, uh, I need to write, ask Ethan down just off that chat. Carry on. Um, move that tea towel, sorry. Sorry, to continue, yes, I think it's brilliant, Joe. The things I would suggest maybe is adding a little bit of salt and pepper okay. as well to yeah, the beans. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I can see that a bit of pepper. What, else, what I would also, I don't mind, is a little bit of Worcester sauce, a little bit of brown sauce maybe. Yes. All these things add to it, but I think... The, the, the meal itself is such a staple. It's genuinely top quality. Yeah. That creaminess of that butter, the richness, yeah, yeah, the yeah. crisp of the bread. The bread was really good as well, by the way. I, I, I saved myself by not putting the beans on until delivery, yeah, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could have been a disaster. Joe, for you, it's for me, beans on toast with cheese in the 9 out of 10 club. It, it is one of those where I really had to think about just beans on toast. It nearly got in there. But the addition of the cheese has moved that dish straight into the nine yeah. ten club. <laughs> it was honestly it's perfect. Come on. Like you say, it's there. If you've got a partner, a tin of beans can do both for you. Yeah. And it's only like what eighty p a quid yeah. if you go for the Heinz ones. But if you go, if you just go classic own brand, it's still the fucking. Same. Al, excuse me, Aldi's own beans, great. Yeah, so you can get great dishes for cheap. So yeah, hundred percent for me. Nine out of ten. That's two out of three, Ethan James. Well, Drew, obviously I mentioned the additions of. Bit of season might have uh, sweetened the deal for me, oh, but and also, I get it makes me very bloated beans and toast. Uh, um, what do you mean you get the farts? I, well, I just get a big old like stomach and I can't really shift it. Same with the cheese on top because I'm lactose intolerant. Shit, I can't believe we just celebrated the added of the added ingredient that Ethan's allergic to. I put a, a sprinkle bit of dust on it as well. <laughs> that's, not, that's not going out my chances. Are we allowed salt and pepper? That's fine. Pepper's basically dust. Yeah, you like, you just fucking pick and choose what you. you it makes you sneeze a little bit, I guess. But yeah, anyway, but despite all that, I eat many things that make me ill because I don't want to let that get in the way of my life and my enjoyment. <coughs> so, beans and toast is in the nine out of ten. Yeah. Yeah. One what of my favourite meals. Thank you so much. Everyone at home, Yeah. just this Saturday, start your weekend with beans on toast with cheese on it. And for a top tip, cook the beans on low heat for a little bit longer. Boil some of that water away. Get them a bit thicker. Thicker. So they're not making your bread quite as soggy. There's a little top tip there. Becky's gone a bit odd with these. Uh, she calls them cowboy beans. What's that? They're all right. She basically puts, like, peppers through them. Peppers? Like red peppers. With a little bit of, like, paprika and that. It's not that great, but she, she's gone through a phase. Sometimes you can't argue. you got to go with it. You <laughs> You're going through the phase of doing your own hair. <laughs> Putting black pepper on the top of your head. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if I can get away with this. Often. Can I just say, you've seemed so much more confident, <laughs> just light of being, since you put that oh, hair pepper man. on. Oh, what a day. I think we need to get you a hair transplant. And we need to do it for the Patreons. So fucking, that's a bigger Patreon. You know, Peter K now wants a bungalow tour. Joni's a... That's what our tour should have been called. Joni's a hair transplant Joni's tour. Joni's a hair transplant. Oh, I've got an idea. One. Why don't we just shave all the hair off your back? We'll just stick it on your head. <sighs> yeah, that's true. It could I'd be quite. That's a lot of hair on my back. Yeah, it'd be quite. Like, that's getting waxed next week, by the way. <laughs> I'm ready for it. 
I want to lie down here. I've got the waxer sorted. Well, Apple in my mind. Oh, professional, yeah. Professional waxer. I'm excited. What does it? What's he got? What's his name? Or what? Does, what name. do they go by? Sorry. I don't know. It's just like wax.com. <laughs> Ethan, pull it up. No, 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 no. Pull up, Ethan. What's wax.com? Right. Should we uh, become uh, not friends for five minutes? Yeah. And take on what score is it? By the way, five four. No. It fucking is. It's not. I think it's six. No, it's it's. We'll work it out. We'll put it on the screen. Ethan, I think it's 5-4. No, I think it's 5-3 because last week was... No, I've definitely won. Last week, I sure remember you looking me in the eyes going, 6-3 is so much different I think to 5-4. I, I think it might be 5-4. You're still winning. <coughs> I think it's 5 if we, if we made a mistake, we'll put it in the edit. But I think, I think, it think it's 5-4. Right, Ethan James. Oh, yeah, we've got another slop-tastic round. Um, this week, and it's uh, continuing a theme of today, you'll, you'll not believe it. Uh, I've wrote this... Uh, Drew versus Drew, and the the topic today is the history of cheese. Oh wow. yes, please. Did I do a COVID lockdown two-hour cheddar Zoom chat with a professional cheesemaker in 2020? Yes, I did. Does that put me at a wonderful advantage? Who did you, who I thought, did you I'd do that so. with? Huh? Who did you do? So my mum bought each of us in the family. Do you know when COVID happened and people yeah. were just spending money on any old <laughs> malarkey? And I say that like it's a bad thing. It's not a bad thing, but it's something that we would never have done otherwise. Yeah. I got a hamper of cheese in the mail, like 12 different cheddars. Wow. Yeah, and we sat for two hours with a bloke talking us through all Jesus, types of cheddar. Really? Tasting, chatting, how cheddaring. Many, how, many, how many questions are on cheddar? Um, I, I, I don't want to give it away, but I don't think any are. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> so easy, advantage back to him then, because he's no, eating more no, flavored no, poutine. No. Right, let's go. Let's go, Ethan, I'm ready for this. Fuck's Here sake. we go. On the history of cheese. History of cheese. The earliest evidence of cheese making harks back to 5500 BCE and is found in what country? 5500. Five what? What? Five, uh, five? BCE. 5500. Oh, sorry, 5500 BCE. Wow. For, for cheese? Okay, so uh, 5500 BC. Yeah, it says E on the end. Does, does that okay. affect anything, oh, Drew? Oh, Christ, evolved. <laughs> right, ready? What have you got? That's oh. one of the most profound things you've ever said, by the way. Not only are you admitting that Christianity is true, but you're also against the uh, creationist theory <laughs> that evolution never happened. Quite what profound, that. Very good. Right, I've got my country. This is one of those questions we're never going to get it right. 5000 BC. Uh, yes, uh, BCE, by the way, means uh, before the, the common era. Oh. Uh, people don't believe in Christ, I guess. Yeah. That's a good Sinners. point. Sinners. Okay. words for them. I'm going to go with a slightly left field answer here. I, mine's going to stun you. I've gone one. Iraq. I've gone similar part of the world. I've gone Turkey. The answer is Poland. Ooh, we both went early civilization Mesopotamia type. I can't believe Poland was a country. Well, five. Well, it's it it's in what is now that is called oh, Poland. Okay. Yeah. So, if you'd have said the Ottoman Empire, you probably would have got a point. Yeah, go on. But uh, the next one. The next oh. question. Question two. Still nil nil. Uh, in what object was the world's oldest existing cheese found? It's approximately three thousand years old. In what object? Yeah. Is it Joe McGrath's gob? If you so if you went, do you know where you have to go to the library? You have to wear the gloves. They show you the world's oldest cheese, and the camera just pans away for a second and pans back to the lap. I've no idea. Joe, have you put the world's oldest cheese in your mouth? <laughs> no. Delicious, though. But it was delicious. So nice. I'm still a melting. With a fucking pickle. I've gone. What? Wait, you go first. Have you written yours? Yeah, down? I've written mine down. You go first, then. No, you go first. I don't believe you've written it. I've put amber. What are you talking about? In amber, like do you know how things get preserved in amber? Like a fly, or whatever. I put I, in a cave. The answer is an Egyptian tomb. Oh. No, you don't get a, tomb. a fucking cave. No, 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 no. Hold on, not. Ethan. You've no. got to be fair and real. Some of these. Don't say fair a and cave real. Slash Egyptian tomb is nearly there. A, tomb. Well, maybe you put a fucking traffic light. <laughs> If you said like a coffin, I might have given you. Yeah, but... a tomb is is man made. Yeah, it was staring us in the face. You're not me. far off. I'll be honest. <laughs> you're a lot closer than me, but you're still wrong. 
Oh, you're very close. I was close. But you're wrong. Some say caves are just Egyptian tombs. Love that. Like Who says in, that? The, the people in Buxton. They've got a big cave up there. <laughs> they say that, do they? Yeah, I've been there. Oh, God, the Egyptians been here. Go on, then, Egypt. Too far, then. Yeah. It's the beans. Um, next Jeez. question. Uh, what country does feta cheese originate from? Feta cheese. Oh. One of the best things to say in the in the Jody accent. Can we hear it one more time? Within the question. Yeah. What country does feta cheese originate? Right. Have you gone for the obvious answer? Yeah. Have you? I might change mine. Then. No, no. What have you gone for? Greece. I've gone for Greece as well. It's Greece. We. Well I was gonna go for Cyprus. That's halloumi. Ah. Huh. That's question number four. I hope it's not. <laughs> What country does halloumi now? Oh, oh, yeah, there, it's not a, bit a, of of comedy. a bit of comedy. Lovely bit of the comedy there, well. Ethan. Yeah. Is everything okay? Uh, it's not yeah. like you, that. Nice. Um, question four. In 1546, who invented the myth that the moon is made of cheese? In what? In 1546, who invented the myth that the moon is made of cheese? Got it. Have you wrote someone down? I've got I've written it down. Shakespeare. I've put Shakespeare as well. Uh, the answer is John Hayward in the Proverbs of John Hayward. <laughs> Fucking hell, that question was very much killed me now. Why did that crop up? Cheese is it's such a nice. A, that's a good fact, though. All right, all right. This moon is made of cheese. Who's John it? Haywood? I think he's. Um, he's, he's, a, think he's. He used to present on Six Music, didn't he? Didn't he? Yeah. yeah he's, he's a, a late late nice. drive time. A poet. Yeah. All late nights. Yeah. Um, next Should question. Don't send me driving. In 2014, how many tons of whole cow milk were produced? The closest gets it correct. Oh, oh. shoot me! In it, the what, fuck how many head. tons of milk in the world were produced in the whole year? And yeah, uh, in t yes. By 2014 as well. Yeah, that's a good point. That's the earliest I could get this information from. So we need to know how many. Is it gallons? Tons. Of all milk in the world. Jeez. I could give you an easier question if you hate it. No, no. In the whole world? Are you sure it's the whole world, Ethan? The whole world. No. Tons, yeah? Yes, tons. That's a I've gone for a big number here. I think I've gone silly. And the closest, by the way, takes it because we're drawing. I've rolled mine down. I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to stick with it. What have you put? You go first this time. I've put something mad. I've put something catastrophic. 100 million. I've put 800 million. Well, you're both fucking miles out, but one of you is as close as. Not necessarily. The answer is 18.7 million, which means Joe McGraw levels this. I feel tight on you there, because that question was wild. So sorry, Joe. Awful feeling this, isn't it? Can't believe it. I, was, uh, I lost fair and square. What do you mean? Out of the whole world, there was only 18... Oh, I suppose that's quite a lot, isn't it? It's not really, though. Because when you think, you get a two litre in the, in the supermarket, that's two kilograms. So yeah, but that could be semi-skimmed. Yeah, but 500 of them, 500 of them is a ton. Yeah, that's true. But I reckon one cow does that in a year. Maybe a ton it's like, a year. Does that look like the UK? Um, oh, well, I hope I'm correct. I, you make me doubt myself. Well, surely oh, there's, surely there's a billion cows in the world. Dairy cows. Is that a song? <laughs> there are broken one. hearts in the world. Let's, right, should we finish off some Ask Ethan's? Yeah, I'm, I'm stunned. I can't believe it's back at five. I'm after spend 24 hours in a fucking McDonald's with this boy. Yeah. Man, yeah. sorry. Ethan. <laughs> I took it out on you and I'm mad at him. Oh, um, just to confirm, um, it is the world... And it says that uh, with the United States accounting for 29% of it, which is 5.4 million of the world, and then Germany follows France and Italy. Wow. Some people don't drink cow milk as well. There's cow is sacred in some parts of the world. That's true. Lucky for you. Ask Ethan. <laughs> Ask Ethan. <laughs> Ethan, would you, have you ever or would you ever consider wearing a cock ring? Oh, that's nice. Um, what do they do? What don't they do? You know what a cock ring does. I don't. I actually don't really know what it does. Is it? Is it, it sort of, sort of a, is goes it... round it and vibrates. What turns the whole thing into a sort of bike pump? 
that mm. is you don't I, cover it up. Oh. The thing just sort of goes over it. Like have you, you used one before? Like you put in, I mean, they might have adventured now and again. Really? Like you put in one of those beat bullying bands on when you're in year six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Say no to racism. You just put it down. What? So are you telling me that you you're you're in the scene? I was in the scene maybe five years ago, but I quickly got out of it. How quickly? Because but I was sometimes, got stuck in it. Sometimes the ring wasn't exactly the loosest thing going. I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm saying I think any man would have struggled putting it in there. And by the end of it, it looked like Barney the Dinosaur was that purple. It's like, fucking hell. No oh kids around, God. No, no, no. Barney can be your friend too. If you just make believe him. So that's, the, that's Joe's cock for you. No, I'm sure of that. Would you give it a go, Ethan? What, your knob in a cock? <laughs> uh, you can if you want, but I mean, your own knob. Well, after you it, it'll get choked and go all purple, oh, I feel like I don't want to have it anymore. God. You've never. I'm surprised you've never done it. No, I've never done that. You've got a bad past. You keep saying this like have I'm you, fucking. Have you ever worn anything like down I'm, there? Uh, me, fucking what's it called? Have you ever worn anything down there? Have you, I ever worn anything down there? Like what? <coughs> a Punch and Judy show? A little puppet? You you explained to us at the start of this pod that you take about an hour and a half to trim your pubes. Yeah, I'm wearing barely anything down there. That's the whole point. So you looks like wear, a freshly tanned like motorway. Nah, no need to. If you need to shake it about a bit, put it in a fucking Dulux paint mixer, do you know what I mean? Jesus. Don't get a ring around it. We've got all of one of them in our gaffs, do we? <laughs> um, all right, oh, that's just fascinating. A uh, question for us all on our Instagram page. Uh, yeah. I forgot the name, so I apologise. He wanted to ask Ethan, could be all of us though, what's the best sandwich? Mm. Oh, it's an excellent question. I guess I have to go off my history of having meal deals. And I don't really know because I mix it up. Um, fucking hell. Talking himself out of an answer. Oh, well, it? You go first then while he's fucking unpicking what he's just said there. Every every elite sandwich for me has to have crisps in it. If that's in the sandwich or you whack them in yourself. There's nothing like getting a meal deal and fitting four or five of your crisps in that bad boy. Yeah. Do you not agree? Yeah, but tell us what the sandwich is then. I'm, I'm kind of with Ethan. If I had to pick a, a meal deal sandwich for the rest of my life, mm -hmm. do you know what? Sometimes, I mean, right now, thinking about it, it could be a prawn cocktail. Oh, it's radical. But from the meal deal section. That's upsetting. Because the best sandwich in the world is probably one like from like Italy or Fat Pat's is technically a sandwich. That was nice. That was great. But if we're going meal deal route, mm. have all the selection there. You want something a bit saucy, don't you? Yeah. Like a chicken stuffing's <gasps> nice, isn't it? Yeah, that's good. They used to do chicken stuffing and bacon, but I think the rising costs have cancelled that one out. Yeah. Sainsbury's also did a ham hock one as well. Did you have that? No. Okay, you, you've you gone now. You've gone to another world. Prawn mayo. So, sometimes when you start talking about food, you disappear. Prawn mayo with maybe salt and vinegar squares. Fit them bad boys in. Mm. Munch off your head. <coughs> Happy days. If we're sticking to meal deal only... Ethan's got an answer, by the way. He's fucking gagging can't wait. to get it If out. we're sticking to meal deal only, I'm a, I'm a value for money, man. Catch oh. me with the with the the triple, the cheese triple. Catch me with that all day breakfast. Do you oh, know what is I mean? that triple? It can be tripled in certain can stores. It? Yeah, a triple brekkie. Yes. Oh, man, well, that's that why it's all day because it takes you fucking six hours to eat it. <laughs> but I'm going value for money every time. What annoys me? But over flavour. This is your dream. I can add flavour myself. Frank's hot sauce on the side, no matter what. what about if Chris? I'm going flavour first. I'm probably going to go, and this is a radical choice, and I'm, and I'm sorry, Ethan, if I'm going to ruin your limelight here because mm. this is something you introduced me to, but the pulled beef <gasps> and Red Leicester... This was my answer. The pulled beef and Red Leicester <laughs> meal deal from Tesco is fucking great. Pulled beef and pulled Red beef, Leicester? Pulled beef, Red Leicester. I think it comes with, with mayo and a caramelised onion chutney. Oh, it is know. so good. It's so good, isn't it, Ethan? Oh, well, me and Drew once had a really lovely meal deal experience together where we all got the same meal deals. Yeah. Me, Drew, and Callum. We got the, was it the McCoy's prawn cocktail crisps? The Drew? McCoy's, it was a uh, spicy king prawn or Thai king prawn. Oh, yeah. Carry on. It was lovely. And then, uh, obviously, I was hyping up this pulled beef and red Leicester cheese sandwich for some time. And eventually everyone got involved in it. And just seeing the community that I brought to everyone here and nice. how much we, we enjoyed it. We were just laughing because it was that's so nice. nice. Oh, it was so good. Lovely. So that meal deal, that definitely. Perfect. Well, that's me done over and out. You say that. 
You told us the other day on a group chat that you ate four takeaways on Friday. Yeah, right. Yeah, I did. We have to talk about that because that is the the that is Elvis Presley in his final. Well, first days. thing I'll say is I didn't eat every single takeaway, uh, and by the end of it, you were lucky if you got two bites out of me because I was flagging. Place number one, I went to your friend of mine, Levy B. Oh, Levy, Levy got Bakery. Like, got Levy Jean Bakery. Wow, what what a reception. What a reception. Oh, mate, they got the whole team out. Really? Like, photos. take that when you came back together. I'm sure it is. Fo- I think it's not put the photo in the group chat. You did, yeah, but we're going to put it in the podcast as well. If I, yeah. And then... Look at that picture. They love they it. They love it. So that was great. Went to a place in Stockport called Rack. Big shout out to the Rack Boys. What, is They've, it Rib Place? Huh? Rib Place? No, Sandwich Place. Interesting. Yeah, that is interesting, isn't it? They've started a lasagna toasty. No. Very good. Mm. Review coming soon, Food Review Club. That Seeky was a Greek place. That Seeky. That I love a restaurant with a, a pun name. Very good. One of my favourites. There's a couple, Just for Laughs, which was a falafel place that was also just hilarious to be in there. Yeah. My other favourite, in the style of Only uh, Only Fools and Horses logo, Only Foods and Saucers. Oh, that's nice. Not bad, is it? And my personal favourite, there is a mobile fish and chip shop, I think in Bolton, that is Elvis theme. You sell mobiles and fish and chips. No, no, no. It's on on wheels. Oh. Chip shop on wheels, right? If you can guess what it's called, I'll give you a quid. Elvis themed mobile fish and chip shop. The greatest food shop pun in history. Hound, I'm thinking hound dog. You got anything? I'll give should I'm I tell you? All shook up. All shook, shook I like up. that you're really trying for this. Can I tell you what it's called? Yeah. Cod in a trap. Oh god, oh. it was so obvious as well. It was staring in place. Can I ask people to get involved in this? I mean, I, I know we've got the drags of the listeners now. We've got to this bit, but if there's a shop that sells two very completely opposite things, yeah. so like I just said, mobiles and fish and chips, yeah. Because there's a, there's an example that's coming to mind. I need to think about it more. And I'll bring it back next week. Wow, just it sells. They want to tease. It sells com- two very completely different items. Right. But if you've got anything like that near where you live, let, let's get involved in that because okay. I'd like to highlight those businesses. Okay. Right, I'm going to go. Should we go? Should we wrap this one up? Yeah. Wrap this it's been a up. great day. A successful entry to 9 out of 10 Club. We've sold out all the tickets for the live show. Thank you once again to everyone who is coming along. We're going to make sure it's a very, very special event. If you want a patron already and you've got this far in the podcast, you bloody better be. Head over to patreon.com <laughs> forward slash Sloppy Joe's podcast. Send in your agony bants. Send in your questions, your queries, your Ask Ethans to Sloppy Joe's podcast at gmail.com. Thank oh, you. Any ideas Joe, as well? Because we so think much. we might do a live Halloween special. Or a Halloween special, what should we the do? Spooktacular. The Spooktacular. If we did something li- live on the 31st, which is a Monday, it's a pretty boring day, isn't yeah. it? But if we could spice things up a bit. Live stream. Live stream. What, what would you want us to do? Mm. We'll sort something out, don't we'll worry about that. Something. Yeah. Thank you for joining us for the Sloppy Joe's podcast. Thank you, Ethan, for writing questions that were so difficult that Joe is now tied with me in Joe versus yes, Joe. Please. Well done, Joe, for eating four takeaways on Friday. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Wave, Ethan. Oh. Uh, bye.